This is how the Google Merchant Center misrepresentation error looks like. And because you're watching this video, you'll probably need some help to fix this. That's why I'm explaining exactly what to do in this video if I would log in and see this issue appearing in my Google Merchant Center account. I've directly helped more than 250 people solving the misrepresentation error. And here's the proof that the website we are going to look at today, we unlocked the Merchant Center as well. To fix this error, we are going to a seven step plan of the frequent mistakes people are making when their Merchant Center is most likely suspended for the misrepresentation error. And now let's dive right into my screen. So here we are looking at the website we recently fixed the misrepresentation error for. And the first step we need to do is avoiding a mismatch in company information that you're displaying on your website and you implement in your Merchant Center account. So for example, if we go all the way down to the footer, we can see the company details right here. And these company details need to be exactly the same as you mentioned in your Google Merchant Center account, meaning that the company name is exactly like this. The address is exactly like this. The email address from the customer service is exactly uh, visible here on your website as implemented in your Merchant Center. And we are always link as an extra option to the contact page to even be more trustworthy in the eyes of Google Merchant Center. Then we are applying the phone number as well in your merchant center and a company uh, number as well to make it more likely to get trust from the Google Merchant Center as well. So what we try to avoid here is have a mismatch in information. So for example, uh, here, if you uh, don't mention Australia, but you mention this in your Google Merchant Center, you currently have a direct mismatch of the company information, right? So all the information about your company details in the Merchant Center need to be exactly in the right steps here mentioned on the website as well. So the second step is to use a broken link scanner to scan all links on your website to see if you potentially link to broken links on your website and give visitors a bad experience in the eyes of the Google Merchant Center. So to do so, I always open a new tab, search for broken link scanner. Then I always use this one, the dead link checker right here. So you copy and paste your website URL and implement it here and do a single a whole website check right here. If you have a super big website, there can be a small fee, but most likely it will be a free tool for you to use. So this is super important because if you use broken links on your website, Google Merchant Center displays this as that they give a bad experience from the visitor, first from Google and then on your website, right? So your website needs to be in top condition and avoiding any broken links. So as soon as people click something, they get directed to the right page and the broken link scanner can help you solve this issue and get visible which links are broken so you're able to fix it right here. And by following the steps in this video, we unlock the Merchant Center for Leon. But this is most likely not the case yet as we are just in the second step. Now we are going to the third step, which is also super important. The third step is avoiding mismatch in shipping information between the Merchant Center and your website. I will show you exactly how to go and check how we fix that uh, for this partner. Uh, we first go to the shipping policy right here. And what is super important for this shipping policy right here is that you mention the transit time. So how long does it take for you or your fulfillment center to ship out the products and how long does the actual shipping from the products take to the customers as well. So we need to also implement this in the shipping policy right here. So for example, uh, here you can see how we implement it here. All orders are processed in the same day if ordered before 1 p.m. So we already know it's maximum one business day for the transit time. And then for the shipping time, we make a nice table right here uh, displaying the shipping times uh, to all the countries that this website is selling right here. What is super important also to mention in the shipping policy is like, do we have free shipping? Do people actually need to pay for the, for the shipping? So you need to implement the same information on your website as in your Google Merchant Center. So when they scan your uh, shipping policy page, they see exactly the same information as in your account. What can be also super important is to mention any couriers you are using uh, while shipping the products to the clients. So for example, here we implemented the Australian post 
uh, to make sure that um, it's shipped by this company to the clients on the website. So this is not likely demanded by uh, Google Merchant Center, but to give as much trust as possible for the people that are going to visit your website as well as for the Merchant Center uh, employee that are going to check your website to fix the misrepresentation issue. It's always good to mention extra things such as the shipping company you're using right here. So what is also super important to mention in the shipping policy you can see here is like how do people track their order uh, if they have any cancellations uh, how long can they wait uh, before uh, doing that or how long does it take for you to uh, accept the cancellations if they want to make so and also the company information you need to implement on all policy pages as well so you can just see that we copy and paste the company information uh, from the footer right here so it's always good to mention this kind of things in the shopping information as possible and then step number four is to avoid any mismatch in the return or refund policy that you have on your website in regards to what you implement in your merchant center account so to go ahead and show you how we fix that we go to the return and refund policy right here uh, we implemented the amount of days that people have to return their products right for example here 15 days from the delivery date this is also a super important thing to mention that the people that order from your website have an x amount of days to return the product after it's actually delivered so not from the moment you ship it out that's a common mistake people make actually uh, most of the time we need to uh, mention restocking fee as google merchant center is requesting this information when we create the refund policy uh, in the account as well for the refund time people have seven days so if people return the product uh, from this website within 15 days they receive their money back within seven working days after the company received the products back that's also super important to mention so what we also need to mention right here is if people are paying the actual shipping price um, to the company to get the product delivered back to you or are you giving them a return label so they have free return shipping right here so we see that this partner implemented the shipping cost return for free as we did so for him so that's an important thing you need to mention as well another thing to mention on your return and refund policy is how does it actually work to implement a return uh, for the products people order from your website so you see here they make a small step-by-step -step guide how you can actually uh, initiate a return for this company right and if you want to have a refund you can process and get it in one to two days after they submit it uh, because of the payment processing things and one more time we implemented also the company information right here as we did so for the shipping information as well step number five is having a problem in the about us page so when we go to the about us page uh, it needs to be clearly written by the owner or the story behind this brand right most of the time i see that people uh, implement just a random ai generated text right here for the about us but when the merchant center employee is going to read uh, this description on your about us page and feels most likely that it's not written by you from your heart but by an ai uh, they are most likely uh, going to suspend it for misrepresentation as this is not the representation who you really are right so that could be one of the reasons as well why you get suspended so make sure to have at least some information about your original story or your website or what you're trying to achieve uh, with this selling this kind of products right so you can see here they have quite a uh, long uh, about us page right so that's always good in the trust uh, for the google merchant center so when the uh, employee of the merchant center scans this page they see a full story and think oh this brand is actually legit i can better unblock because then they can continue with the google ads right one more time we implemented the company information as well on the about us page so that's also super important and even extra also a contact form right here step number six is having a bad navigation menu in the eyes of google right so what you can see here that literally all information from this website is visible uh, in the navigation menu so you can see shop now with all the collections that they have you can see the help menu right here so if you scroll on it you can see all the important information about the company and the policies right here they have a track your order page which is highly recommended the about us page the faq uh, so this is all like really important information and make sure to uh, implement this in your header menu as well and when we go down to the footer menu you also see more relevant information uh, such as the support pages the policy pages and the quick links the about us sizing guide sourcing faq so literally everything as a visitor what you need to know are in this navigation menus so just from navigating in the footer or header you can find all relevant information 
and so in the eyes of the Google Merchant Center employee who is reviewing your website. And then step number seven, having bad organization in your collections. So if you are selling multiple collections on your website, your collection menu need to be super organized. So in this case, we made a new uh, menu for this partner. So for example, if you click on it, you see all the relevant uh, shoes in this case uh, for this collection, right? So it needs to be super organized uh, in order for the visitor to get the best experience on your website. And that's what Google always wants in the end. And that is the main goal behind all the steps what I just explained, because they are literally checking if visitors from Google that go through your website have a good experience. So the collection menu is an important one right there because people need to browse easily uh, throughout your website. So here you can see a good sample. It doesn't have to be with images as well, but this was the best case for this partner. So when you click any shoe right here, you always get the right filter. And it's super important that you show the right products, uh, in this case for the right collection, because if you don't show the right products, the Merchant Center employee will suspend your account again, uh, most likely because it's a bad experience for the visitor on your website. But even if you follow all steps what I mentioned in this video, there is a tiny chance that your misrepresentation error is not solved because every website is custom and needs a custom check as well and are tiny tweaks needed to solve the misrepresentation error. And if you want to be 100% sure that you're going to fix the misrepresentation error in your Merchant Center account, then click the first link in the description to see how I can help you. And if you're not ready for whatever reason yet, then watch this video where I answer five of the frequently asked questions I get all the time from people where I work with to solve the misrepresentation error. I see you there.